Our 17 customers are local dancers who've hot-footed it here in between shows. They need to be in and out within an hour and a half. The food's prepped and the restaurant's only half full. And with Nigel by his side, they should be able to cope. Thank you, sir. Need to see the kitchen under pressure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know he's your boyfriend, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But give him some work to do. Bring him on. <laughs> hey, are you really sure, then? No, I just put me three inches of water in the bottom of that, mate. Dealing with several orders at a time is standard practice in the kitchen. Is that first order on? But within seconds of receiving the first bunch, Dave's flapping about like a headless chicken. Yeah, OK, darling, right, you've just put me four checks in, yeah? Who's in first? OK, yeah, they both came in together. We got both the checks at the same time. Big deal. Oh, fuck. And whilst he's been panicking about the orders, Dave's burnt the custard. It's a criminal lace. Right. So that's on, that's on the chicken. Do you call out the orders, Dave? So, sorry? Do you ever call out the orders? Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm struggling in my own mind at the minute, so... Right. How not to run a restaurant. Rule number three. If you lose all powers of communication under pressure, you shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Nice, can you be doing anything? Dave, you've clammed up. You've talked to him. Tell him what you want him to do. I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm not sure myself. So, it's your fucking restaurant. I know it's my restaurant. Right, get me a piece of pork. No, it's there. Dave, you're looking the shit already. I am, yeah. You are. The customers have been here 27 minutes and they still haven't had a sniff of grub. OK, I'm going to be nearly ready to go in a minute on the first table, yeah? All right. thank you. The food has finally started to leave the kitchen. But whether it's edible or not is another matter. It's depressing. They're cooking for a dining room that's only half full. But for Chloe to survive, it needs to be completely chocker at weekends. Very difficult to keep people placated when you're not boring anyone. Can we not give them all a bang? <laughs> I'll pay. Fuck me, it's been a long time. Oh, no, it's hard, so I'm getting no feedback from Dawn. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm running blind. Running blind at the minute and not what having feedback? any... What feedback do you need right now? Well, really, is, is everybody OK? Is anyone worried, you know... Starting to sort of like whinge because they're waiting, or it's just like. Relax, just relax. Just you're all it's... over the shop like a fucking orangutan. If you cool down and just relax and get yourself composed, I'll be yeah, doing 10 times better job. Yeah, yeah, I know. No? Yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Without getting paranoid. Yeah. Our guests have to leave in 15 minutes, and they haven't even started on desserts yet. Well, we two, you've got a yeah. turn left, yeah? Yes, you've got the first two, table right. Three. Table two, two moves, what bread and butter pudding, have I got it? Yeah, you got right. it. Right, table seven, four moves, have I got it? Yeah. Restaurant of the year, Blackpool. Yeah, shithole of the year. Um, yeah, making hard work and nothing really. All over the place, uh, completely disorientated in his own kitchen. Very bad at delegation and totally in a mess. I can't think of two things at once. 17 guests, that's all. It took him one hour and five minutes to cook for 10 people. And the last seven guests have taken 45 minutes. Shocking. What's going on in there? And Lennon is really fucking embarrassing me out there. Let me, uh, let me give you a hand. So, um, who's, communi who's communicating? Who's, who's doing what? No. Anyone in? What's that loom down there? Who put that under there? Obviously. The smouldering 35-degree heat in this kitchen oh, has started to scramble their brains. The Who put it under the grill, guys? I put it on there. And did you look after it, Les? Well, I just assumed they saw me put it under. Because they stood right next to me when they did it. So. This is like a fucking Lauren Hardy show. Huh? This is another fine mess I've got myself into. Salad for... Two veg, four, three. Salad. Veg, so three, yeah. It's a farce. Veg is overcooked. Is that overcooked? With mother and son playing the blame game. Where is it? What? There's no where it's going, the fuck all. This is the problem we have most of the time. Fucking waitresses. No one is taking control. Table two's now looking for some discount. I'd say get fucked. No, you, don't, you can't do that. No, you, you don't can't. speak to customers Two like that. Two bottles of wine. Two hours, that's like nearly 30 quid. Yeah, but quid. you can't speak to a customer like that. Well, I fucking disagree. Well, I, I'll sort it out. Well, I'm just saying, the fella, it, 
This kitchen's a pressure cooker, waiting to explode. Anyway, let's not argue. Let's just try and get some food out. Just let it. Fuck off. Fuck on it. Fuck and cook it yourself. A head chef who can't stand the heat. Fuck's what sake. happened to the quaint family-run restaurant? Fuck me. It's not normal, this. You know, this is not fucking normal. Huh? Doing your mum a favour is one thing. Helping to run her business into the ground is another. You can't be happy with this. It does hurt to see it, because I know that every penny my mum's got is in the, her house is in this, everything's in this. It's shit. I apologise yeah, yeah, so much. Maura's given away over £100 worth of free drink and food. She'd have been better off closing for the night and saving the restaurant's reputation. Uh, Lenin, stand next to your mum. I actually sat down with a little bit of excitement, you know that? Thinking, Christ, this is quaint, this is beautiful. Then when the food arrived, trust me, I don't think, quite honestly, we need to hear any more bad comments on the food tonight, because I've had a fucking belly full. We're in the shit. Strange setup. So he's out there on the barbecue, and you're left to run the kitchen. Yeah. Fucking hell, you're 20 years of age, you're 18 years of age. I mean, how come you got all that responsibility? And what happens when it's busy? Shit. shit. Who would put someone who's clearly a good chef in charge of a barbecue? Time to find out from the manager. But which one? Kirsty, right, how are you? the general manager, how are you? is Lois's daughter-in-law. Right. Before coming to Britain, she worked in restaurants in her native New Zealand. The barbecue, how would you describe that? Um, my aim was for a Kiwi barbecue. And I thought that. <laughs> that sort of Sellers. territorial Kiwi beach life. Something like that, um, yeah. But, sweetheart, we're not in fucking Auckland. I we're know. in Sandgate. The lack of focus in this place is astounding. Lois hasn't even got her flagship fine dining restaurant under control. The majority of the complaints that come through are normally on your day off. Have you ever eaten in the restaurant? No. Because if the complaints are going on when you're not here, you've got to see what they're serving in the dining room so you yeah. can really do something about it yeah. properly. Yeah. and identify it. Are we too complicated? Is the menu too big? Are they inexperienced? Do we need to simplify it? What do, what do I need to do as a head chef? You're the food beverage manager. Have you ever eaten up here? No. How can you relate to your customer's experience if you're not experienced at the same time? Go upstairs, yeah. order. Yeah. I think you'll find something very interesting going on there. Yeah. <laughs> Kirsty hasn't worked at the sharp end of the business for about eight months. So today, she's going to waitress. I don't know what's on and what's off, but I'm sure you do. Stuart's number two in the kitchen is 21-year-old Johnny. Hello. So what's going first, Johnny? Uh, I'm going to sit this bar food first, and then the starters. The bread's just gone up for the two, but I can't find anyone to take it out of the lift yet. God. Is it always like this? Yeah. Johnny runs the kitchen two days a week when Stuart's off. This is my chance to see how he copes. Come on, guys. Ten minutes, let's play to be there, yeah? We're fucking around with the garnish. They're a young yeah. team to be cooking such elaborate food. Yeah. And just to add to it, Johnny, they ordered it over one hour ago. Yeah? Yeah. Let's get it out, guys. Come on. Careful. I'm not going to allow you to send that. This is really important for you, you know that, from a professional point of view. Because you've got to go all the way up to the top in this fucking industry, not serving shit like that, big boy. No. And all you're doing by serving that shit is... No, nearly. Hey, destroying the place. And that's just on a fucking burger. And I know you can do better than that, you know that? I know I can do better. There you go, so fucking do it. Yeah. There are only nine customers in for lunch, but it's well over an hour before Stuart and Kevin get their mains. And that cook. That bell's right, isn't it? Can't work it up here. Did you get that I cancelled my starter? Yeah. Unfortunately, Kevin and Stuart aren't the only unhappy customers. Johnny, table nine have fucked off. They've gone. That's the table that had no starters, went straight to the main courses. Where's the ticket gone? In the bin. Why have you put it in the bin? I didn't, but that's where it's ended up. Fucking wake up, will you, yeah? Wake up! This is one of the worst lunch services I've ever seen. Johnny's tried his best, but the real culprit is clear. It's Stuart's food. It's just far too complicated. The slacker chefs are paid well to cook dross. I need to investigate what they're doing wrong. 
Expensive lobster will only attract niche customers, and they won't come back if it's badly cooked. Uh, madam, what did you have? I had the post lobster. Post lobster. Which was tepid. Is it tough? Yes, it's tough. Yeah, flavourless, wasn't it? You always say that. I'm going to get to the bottom of why this lobster tastes so tough. Jesus. How come they're all cooked? Uh, you don't cook these to order? Uh, no, they cook them uh, before. They just blanch in water for like four minutes, that's it. Really? They look like they've been cooked for a lot longer than four minutes. There's so much money here. Yeah. But why are they all cooked and separated from their bodies? Because uh, for when uh, they use them, they can pick up straight away like that. Jesus. Look, another shit set. There's 200 pounds worth of lobster here. Pre-cooking is wasteful and ruins the taste. It's balmy. When, when did these arrive? As this morning. But they're all open. They arrived this morning. I know, but you're not serving them, are you? But they're dead. They're all open. Some nuts inside. What? Alex, come on. Fuck me, I'm not blind. I know, I know you're not blind, God. They're, they're open. Every one of them's open. So are we using them tonight? If we need some, yeah. We'd... But you'll kill somebody. They're all open. They're dead. You can't serve them, Alex. Yeah, I know. You're I... not that fucking stupid. No, I'm not fucking stupid about that. I know a little bit about fish. So, are we going to serve these tonight? No. Thank you. Fucking hell. Put them in the bin. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Those mussels could have been fatal. I'm going to tackle Alan about the kitchen disasters. Bizarrely, he acts like there's no complaints. There's no sense in lying, I'm telling you the truth. In general, people love it. I'm, I'm fucking amazed. But what? I've been here the first day. I found fucking fourteen palm sea bass, open fucking mussels, the most horrendous fucking pack of freedom there I've ever seen in my entire life. And now you're thinking that it's rare that someone's complaining about. No, I'm not complaining about. I'm just I'm, I'm telling you. You're what, a very good. No, 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 no. I'm telling you what I'm told. No, I don't need to bullshit, and I'm not gonna lie. No, you're because I know, but no, bullshit. Yeah, no, 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 no. I've been honest from fucking day one, and I will always be honest. You're not gonna get lies out of me. You get the fucking truth. Yeah. If someone, if people are complaining, I tell you, people complain. They don't complain. All of what do you want to think? It's not about what I want. Well, no, but no, you but I'm telling you, but go you're on, amazing. I'm telling you the you're truth. Still no, but you're, no, you're telling me I'm a liar. Don't tell me I'm a liar. Don't do that, man. I'm not acting. I'm telling the truth. Did I, did I call you, you a liar? Yeah, you call me an actor. That what did acting I just is bullshit. What did I just say? You said, you said people are not liars. So the muscles were fucking closed, were they? Yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. I didn't see the muscles, so I'm taking your word. Yes, they were no, closed. Uh, listen, I have no, they were open. I ain't. Don't tell me I'm acting and I'm lying, because I ain't. And I ain't, man. And it ain't happening. You're doing ain't a good show. A really good job. Thanks, um, you're out of order. You're out of order telling me I'm doing a show. I ain't doing a show. I'm you're running, I'm running, Don't point. doing things. You don't have to point. Oh, bullshit. You don't have to point. I said, you amaze me. All these I'm things going on in your kitchen. You still. Now, you, don't you, still fuck. you don't give a fuck. Of course I give a fuck. If you didn't fuck, you'd do something about it. Sorry? You're silly ass. You're a stupid ass. Why do you think I don't give a fuck? How you're dare you? How you're dare scared. you say I don't give a fuck? You're scared. What am I scared of? What, you? I'm not scared of No, not me. Hey. You're scared about your chefs. Your shit scared of me. Oh, I don't know. Fine. Fine. Stop. You just called me a silly ass. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't got the bollocks to go in there and tell them the truth. The chefs are taken advantage of Alan, but only because he's weak. Alan's in denial about what's happening in his own kitchen. Before I make any changes, I need to see how Daniel runs the kitchen. It's Saturday night, but at 7 p.m., with the first table already seated, Rachel seems agitated. He's not ready, and there's hardly anything on the menu, so. He's not ready. Like to do some cooking yourself. What's he been doing for the last three hours? That's oh, what I'm. Yeah. I don't know. He's, a, he's a just. He's pretty chilled out. That's just the way he is. Daniel's first order is for two garden salads. Almost 20 minutes later, he's still fiddling with the salads. Tu te pêches même pas quoi. Fais un petit effort pour un petit peu plus speed, s'il te plaît, pour moi. Oui. Parce que sinon, les clients vont partir et moi, je vais perdre l'argent. Oui, c'est ça, nous, nous fonctionnons. Je vais dire ça. Parce que vous êtes là. Donc, c'est mon faute, alors. Oui, c'est ma faute. Bien sûr. Arrêtez les conneries. Oh. This is a joke. Je n'ai jamais vu ça comme ça. Je n'ai jamais vu ça comme ça. 
This Brazilian nut has lost his marbles. Okay. Have a oh, 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 no, 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 no. It's burning. 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 Leave it there. He says it's burning. The casserole is burning. It's burning. It's normal. Why is it normal? Why is it normal? Explain to me why it's normal. Let's, let's, let's. Explain to me why it's normal. Stop, 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 stop. There are now eight people in the restaurant, and barely anyone is getting served. I mean, I've seen some bad kitchens in my time, but not quite as disorganised and fucking chaotic as this. Never been to a car wing for ages. Last time I went, I think it was back in 1982, called the Bernie Inn. And it was a Sunday lunch, and it was fucking ghastly. The Priory's food must be denture-friendly. This place is rammed with the Blue Rinse Brigade. I'm the youngest here by miles. It's almost like they've opened a soup kitchen for the elderly. And it's a sort of glamorous old people's home. But my age concern is explained when the golden oldies keep turning up with suspicious-looking vouchers from the local papers. We offer two meals for price of one. It's 9 99 for... Is that for... That's for your car, free. You put a discount on 9.99. We do. So how much discount? Um, it's buy one get one free. Um, so it's fifty percent. Um, so you eat here for five. Um, yes. I'm starting to feel left out. Am I the only one here without a voucher? Did you bring your coupon? Yes, I did. Yep, yeah, two. And did you bring your voucher today? Yes, yes. And did you bring your coupon? Oh, that's what we get. <laughs> that's I mean, it's cheaper to come here than it is cooking at home. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, for two of us, we're at really mild value. You must have dementia to only let half your punters pay. No wonder this business is losing money. The food's a bargain, assuming it's up to scratch. Toby's the Priory's head chef. His claim to fame was a stint at Planet Hollywood. He's the starship trooper in charge of the carvery. I don't very much eat roast dinners when I'm at home nowadays. They earn them every day, but I still eat them. As you say, never trust a skinny chef, do you? His sidekick, Bob, is the part-time carvery chef. Right, what have we got? You've got turkey here. Yes. Right, you've got you know, um, get a gammon, river beef, pork and lamb. So these are done every day? These are every day, yeah. What, what, what stuffing That's is that? That's peach and nut bound with an orange juice. And it's rather nice, though, they tell us. Peach and nut bound yeah. with orange juice? Yeah. And that's a dauphinoise. Bloody hell, oh, this is a throwback, isn't it? I'll have a little bit of the dauphinoise. OK. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> Jesus. And all that for a fiver? Yeah. <laughs> Just enjoy it, Gordon. <laughs> Fucking hell. Roast potatoes cooked to fuck, and stuffing that was like sort of trying to cut through a silicon implant. And it... Oh, dear. Yorkshire pudding, well, soggy. And turkey, well, bloody hell. It's just so dry. Pasty. Even the quality of the beef. It's dry. Shopping. We're still stuck in the doldrums here, and all I've had today so far has been shit. Shit at its best. Tonight, I've press ganged some reluctant locals into eating here. I need to see how Mike handles cooking for a full restaurant. Such a large menu like that. It's a bit nightmare, no? It is. Do customers wait long for food? Not usually. Mike's confident, I'm not. His menu's made up of cookbook recipes designed for home cooks to lovingly slave over. But for one man to try and cook them from scratch for a restaurant is madness. The dishes are just too complicated to be cooked quickly. Mike's running around like a headless chicken. Oh, shit. I'm doing it the hard way. I know that. Fuck me, you're doing it the hard way, huh? What's clear right now, Mike is obviously not a fucking chef. He should be cooking for three or four tables at the same time. He's not. He's only cooking for one, so it's like watching my mum at home cooking for a dinner party. Two hours into service, and the food's just not getting out. We haven't ordered yet. We haven't taken the order yet. It's like a famine. Customers are staving off hunger by eating bar snacks. With an unworkable menu, the service is spiralling out of control. The pressure's on this husband and wife team. 
and these two are going to war. Mike's even got his own Welsh battle cry for Karen. This isn't a marriage, it's a battlefield. Their relationship needs some serious fixing. Outside, there's more trouble brewing. So it was better for them to sit there where they were. Excuse me, we've been waiting here since 8 o'clock. I'm going home. I couldn't give a shit about your crappy bloody pub. It's an absolute load of shite. We've got a 70-year-old bloody woman with us, and, and you haven't given me a, a bloody shit. And that's for you. Okay. Well, that's your prerogative. I did apologise for the, yeah, the behaviour. But there's no need to bloody swear and shout in front of everybody. Well, I'm sorry, you know, crap. Yeah, well, don't bother coming back. Good. Bastard. I can't believe what I'm hearing. There's no stopping this woman. There's a misunderstanding over an order. Karen's going off on one again. Since five o'clock this morning. Yeah. I've, I've come here especially for this. I know you have. And I've got nothing for it. Well, whose fault is that? It's not my fault. You was the one that said you was leaving. I didn't say you were leaving. I you said, did I said say some you was leaving. Of our fucking thing are leaving. Right, now I want you to leave now because I don't want to be thrown at. I've had a dead fault tonight. Now if you want to swear at me again, you can leave right now. Right. I'm be no, I haven't got a bloody after. I'm whoa. not being thrown whoa. at. Whoa, whoa. Out. 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 Right? So just get in your car and go. Oh, dear. This is a first for me. I've never, ever seen a customer chucked out of a restaurant like that before. That is fucking embarrassing. And no wonder this place is in serious trouble, because that was appalling. What in the fuck have I got myself into here?